that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Beloved children of God, the Spirit has gathered us this day, and we will be sent out and strengthened to love and serve our neighbors. A special welcome to our guests and visitors here today, both in-house and online. We are glad that you are here. I want to invite you to pray with me for a man by the name of Herbert Hall. He is the father of Abigail Hall, and so he would be known as Grandpa Furby to Colby and Holden, some little ones in our congregation. He is hospitalized in Barnes in St. Louis. He is improving, uh, but he is in serious condition. So if you would please lift Herbert and uh, his daughter Abby and their family in your prayers, that would be greatly appreciated. I want to extend a big, big, big thank you to many of you, to all of you actually, but especially to our educational ministry team and to our mission team for all of your efforts last week, last week for the Rally Day and God's Work Our Hands Servant Project together last week. We had many helping hands and servant hearts. We had people of any and all ages gather around tables, standing in line, packing food, playing games together, enjoying one another's company. I believe that is what the kingdom of God is to be like. So thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of the educational ministry team, I extend an invitation to you. Miss Joanne and Miss Deb want you to know that next week there is a special outing during our Sunday school time. We're going to take Sunday school on the road, and we're going to Schaefer's Pumpkin Patch in Beecher City. So you and your family are welcome to join us there. We're going to carpool from here at 1030, or you can meet us over there at 11. Uh, because of many generous donations in years to pass, the entrance fee for that day is covered by our youth account. Uh, there is food available there, and so we are going to gather as family and friends to enjoy some good old fun at the pumpkin patch. Invite your friends and neighbors, bring your dad, grandkids, bring yourself. Just come on out and have a good time. Check out the Facebook page. You can see uh, some information there. And, uh, there's a ton of things to do there. It's quite amazing. I have a sneaking suspicion I'm going to turn back into a little child that day, um, and it will be fine. Next Sunday, um, we also, oh, I'm sorry, that is next Sunday. I want to invite you to several things happening here this week. Did you know we have two study groups? Not just one, but we have two that take place here. Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m., Sacred Circle. Thursday nights at 7 p.m., Come As You Are. Information about those are in your newsletter and your bulletin. Come for a time of prayer together and study and fellowship. All are welcome. We invite you to uh, invite guests and visitors, your friends and neighbors. We also want to invite you uh, to a fun mission project our In Stitches quilting team, they don't just work on occasion, they work year round to make all those beautiful kits, uh, quilts, the school kit bags, and have everything put together for our October distribution, which is just around the corner. So getting a few more of those completed will be wonderful joy for that team, and they meet this Wednesday at 9 a.m. So come one, come all. Uh, don't feel like, hey, I have to know how to use a sewing machine. If you can use scissors, if you can use a ruler, if you can tie a knot, great. If you can't, they'll teach you, right? All they need is teachable people with servant hearts. Okay. And here's another Wednesday invitation. Chris, you got an invitation. He's shaking his head. He's got two thumbs up. He's saying, come learn from me. Chris isn't one who just sits behind the keys of the organ or behind the keys of the piano or on the keys of the saxophone. That man is an excellent teacher. Please 
come take the opportunity to learn from him. You don't have to have had been a kid in band growing up. You don't have to know how to carry a tune in a bucket or have a great voice. Come Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Try out the handbells. Learn them. See if you like them. If you do, stick with it. If you don't, okay. But we also need more handbell players and some choir, some great voices. So uh, come Wednesday night, 6 p.m. bell, 7 p.m. choir. All right. I think that's it for announcements for what's happening this week. I do want to draw your attention to the cow on the screen because last week Eric Kaiden let you all know that it's not just the challenge of uh, 300 boxes for Pastor Maria to kiss a cow, but the mission team has amped up that challenge and they're saying if we can get 400 boxes by the end of November, not just one, not just two, but three additional people will line up to kiss a cow. So if you would like to see Marsha, Eric, or Dan kiss a cow, pick up some hamburger helper. Wink, wink, it's on sale this week right here in town at the grocery store. So pick some of that up to be paired with the ground beef that our mission team is supplying our food pantry. There's a typo in our bulletins. We all make mistakes. So the uh, communion song today is number 595, Jesus Loves Me, rather than 598. It is corrected on the hymn board, but if you're one who's looking up that there and you can't figure out why the words don't match, that would be fun. Why? Number 595. I need a couple helpers today. I'm looking for two kids who would be willing to help during communion time. Do I have any volunteers? Looks like Miss Chayton. You know the job, right? All right, Miss Emerson, you know the job, right? Thank you in advance for your servant hearts, young ladies. Take a deep breath with me. Let's breathe in God's love. Let's breathe out all that separates us from connecting with God this day. I invite you to stand in body or spirit. One last important invitation. That table behind me, that doesn't belong to you people of St. Paul. That doesn't belong to me, the current pastor here, or any pastor that has ever presided at it. That table belongs to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and he leaves no one out. So therefore, all are welcome to participate in the sacrament of Holy Communion, regardless of age, understanding, or denominational background. That includes you friends who are joining us online, grab some elements representing bread and wine, and join in with us during that sacrament. If you prefer to come forward at that time, cross your arms, and I would be more than happy to give you a blessing. The choice is always yours. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips. We have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace, and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen.
of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I invite children of any and all ages to come forward for a special message.
to your seats as we turn our hearts and minds to the Holy Scripture. upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Word of God, word of life. Amen. Our psalm today is printed in your bulletin and will be sung. to you. 
Word of God, Word of Life. Little imitators. 
as they engage in hand motions during the singing songs and taking a reverent pose and praying. They imitate what they see. Children not only learn by intentionally being taught, they also learn by what they hear and what they see. This week, something amazing happened. We've been gathering outside for a little while now this summer, where the youngest of the littles are in one area that's in, fenced in like a playpen, within the whole backyard of play area. And the older kids come over to the fence by the younger kids, and they became the teachers. And I thought to myself, okay, what song can they all participate in? Because we really have the little types' attention today. And so we sang, if you're happy and you know it, as one of our songs. Little one-year-olds clapping their hands, stomping their feet, shouting hooray. They could participate. It was beautiful. My heart was happy. Well, there's power in being amongst little children. I believe I learn just as much from them as they do me. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus huddled the twelve together and he said to them, Whoever wants to be the first must be the last and servant of all. And then he picked up a small child and said, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This same story is also told in the Gospel of Matthew with one caveat. Listen to what Jesus says in the Gospel of Matthew. Unless you change and become like children, you will never inherit the kingdom of heaven. It is not easy for most people to learn a good lesson after one little time of instruction, and sometimes people do not want to follow what has been asked of them. Just like being impatient, we humans sometimes pick up things and sometimes we don't, and the disciples were no different. If you were to move forward into the 10th chapter of Mark, you would find that after Jesus is teaching about welcoming children, the disciples get a bit naughty. They rebuke people who are bringing children to Jesus to be blessed. And when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and he said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms and he blessed them. Too often we underestimate what children can do. Too often we focus on the greatness of our own person, noticing our abilities or the abilities that can be seen in the great accomplishments. And thus we place ourselves into the societal norm where we dismiss little children as cute, noisy, messy, and a lot of work. But what children need and deserve from us is our love. They deserve our respect and they deserve the protection from every adult who is capable of doing so. This is exactly what Jesus was doing that day. He was lifting up the most vulnerable amongst them. He was lifting them up so that they might be noticed. And he was teaching that a child is no less significant 
than anyone else in the room. Jesus was teaching that all people matter to God, no matter the age or the capability. This instruction from Jesus, it's an invitation for us to steer clear of the need of titles and honors and boasting of greatness. What Jesus points to is that equality of every person, no matter if they are ordinary or extraordinary. God's love is always, 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 always the same for each and every person. God's love for all ages and stages is an invitation for you to be an imitator of children and to learn from them. How are you playful and inquisitive like a young child? How might God be nudging us as church to live into our calling as beloved children of the Heavenly Father? I witnessed this last week in Rally Day. There was a big change that happened. Playfulness grew in that room. After the job of packing the bags, the servant heart good that we're so good at was done and finished, and children were playing games and adults were talking, I went around and I invited you to be playful. Remember the little frame that says rally day? And I said, let's take your picture. We're all children of God. To sometimes people said, no, 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 no. And all it took was a nudge from the neighbor saying, oh, come on, get in this frame with me. If you are on Facebook, go back and look at those pictures. There is nothing but pure joy and happiness. You can see people's childlike hearts in the faces of the most seasoned people in our pews today, grinning and smiling and being playful and having fun. I must confess, I do believe it is part of the church's fault as to why we don't have fun, why we uh, don't want to be childlike at times, where we think that church is supposed to be sit down, shut up, face forward, don't talk, don't make a noise, and just listen. The church has changed. The world has changed. Jesus said, the stories we have in the Holy Scriptures say, be like children. Therefore, it's okay to come up front for children's message. It's okay to clap your hands and dance and sing and to be silly and smile and be playful and engage in an activity of all ages. I went back and I looked at rally day pictures from years before. Perhaps my favorite is of our oldest male member in our congregation, Jean I see you. Jean was playing with a little rubber snake as we were retelling the story of Adam and Eve in the garden, to which I remember quite vividly how Faye read that story with precision, but a little laughter when she said the word naked. And they were naked. We can have fun. We can be childlike. This is when we see God like we have never seen God before. God is revealed to us in new ways when we be playful and we become children. Well, before all of the action in our gospel reading today of Jesus talking about welcoming children, he has attempted not once, not twice, but this is his third attempt to inform the disciples about his impending death and resurrection. Like most of us, 
when we become uncomfortable, when the word death is spoken, instead of asking questions to gain greater understanding, we dodge the difficult and the uncomfortable. Our heads go down into our laps. Perhaps we pull out our cell phones and start looking at something else. We miss out on a whole new world of perspective when we don't become like a child and become inquisitive and ask questions. Why? What do you mean, Jesus? What does that mean? The disciples didn't ask any questions. They were too afraid. In talking about his impending death, Jesus was inviting them to use their imagination and to envision a world where death would never have the final world. He was inviting them to become little children and to explore the realm of the unimaginable suffering that would be transformed into irrepressible joy. Jesus was inviting them to live into hope and into the promise of the resurrection. The disciples, they didn't take the bait. Instead, their focus was on themselves. But Jesus loved them too much to let them stay there. He radically redirected their focus towards what being the greatest truly was all about becoming vulnerable, like little children. Take note of what Jesus did not do or say. He did not say to do so because it was kind and loving to welcome children. He said that welcoming children was welcoming him and welcoming his father. Jesus said, would you like to know God? Would you like to know more about my father? Would you like to know more about the world that is yet to come? Become like a child. My dear siblings in Christ, beloved children of God, this is an ultimate invitation. It's an invitation to be curious, to explore, to discover the greatness of God. It's an invitation to humble ourselves, becoming a servant leader rather than elevating the significance of our accomplishments. You are regularly invited and encouraged to do so, not just here in this church building, but out in the world. Think about it. When you attend ball games, when you intend band concerts, when you intend anything that a child participates in, what happens? You reminisce of when you were a child and when you were at that free throw line. You reminisce when you had your first band concert and you were nervous as all get out and you couldn't muster up enough spit for your reed to be wet enough to play your saxophone. You remember what it was like to be a child and to be participating in the world. It's not just for us to remember the good old days when we were kids because let's face it, dear church, some of the good old days weren't very good after all. I don't think I would have enjoyed as a little kid coming to church being told to face forward, shut up, not breathe or blink. And if I had to sit in a different side of the church from my dad and my mom, that's not a place that I would want to be. But here in this place, the Holy Spirit is alive and well. The Holy Spirit is constantly invoking in us opportunities to not grow old together, but to grow younger as we age. To be changed. To constantly be like children. Being with those little children at the Lutheran Care Center, it makes my heart happy every week. 
I might be dreading having to get up from my desk and break some concentration from what I'm working on, but every time I go there and leave there, I am filled with such joy for being there. Because it's being with those kids that cultivate in me playfulness and blissed joy. Me, 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 me. Pick me, pick me. Dear beloved child, God has chosen you. God has chosen you for greatness in this world. God has chosen you to be radical to be radical in love, to be radical in servanthood, and to be playful in nature, and to belong to the kingdom of God. Please do not fear being silly. I promise you, your friends like it. Look at the pictures. Please do not fear getting messy and being noisy. I promise you, all messes can be cleaned up, and most of us, can't hear the noise anyways. We've learned how to zone it out. God is found in the chaos of this world, in the chaos of our daily lives, and it is Jesus, our brother, Jesus, our friend, Jesus, our teacher, and Jesus, our savior, who meets you on whatever path or journey that you are on. And it is Jesus who will always rejoice in the child that you are. Thanks be to God. Amen.
He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the Church, for God's good creation, and all who are in need. Loving God, you welcome all at your table of grace. And still in your church, a spirit of humility and curiosity that we embrace all who seek you. We pray especially for ministries of hospitality and faith formation. Creating God, you shape the world so there is more than enough for all. Curb our habits of other overuse and guide us toward more sustainable sources of energy, food, and water. We pray to you.
for the whole church of God. Thanksgiving for the gift of our lives, our offering shared in the meal that we are about to receive. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. As indeed right our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> He took the cup. 
He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. It's shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The table is set, Christ is the host. Come as you are. For those joining us online, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
invite you to stand in the body of your spirit. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal, fed us and blessed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Go in peace, follow Jesus. Thanks be to God.